For the second year in a row, iLead is organizing Future Vista, the new age careers, a conclave that will witness the presence of dignitaries from all the various sectors of the industry. The panels will discuss the changes and growth in the respective sectors along with the emerging new age career opportunities. This will help the young minds choose the right career path for themselves and also industries to build new enthusiastic entrepreneurs and a passionate workforce paving the way for pioneering innovations and futuristic ideas. The world around us is ch changing at a rapid rate and we are entering an era where any passion can transform itself into a lucrative job or business. A gamer can now earn by using his talent in the gaming industry. A sports lover can build a career in the sports industry. A travel enthusiast can now work in various positions across tourism sector while entrepreneurship across sectors is thriving. Engineering isn't the only route for maths or science anymore. They can also choose an alternate and perhaps much more in demand of data science and cybersecurity. Never before has there been so much of variety in career options. This is very much the time to grab the opportunity, follow your passion and build your career in the field you are most ambitious about. Our topic here today is traditional media revival and resurgence. When I was in college, we used to either be told that you become, you have to become an engineer, you become a chartered accountant, or you do management, you know, and basic management. There was IIM, there was XLRI, no other choice. I mean, there's no question of any other choice. Today, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing so much, 128 plus careers you all can choose from. I mean, you all are the luckiest generation on earth. Trust me, you all can make a life within a life. You can follow your passion as well as do something else. You can have a career as well as follow your passion, whichever way you want it. Traditional media will always have that base. But with the ever-changing life, the ever-changing technology, we have advanced, advanced a lot. Media, today, the kind of speed you can execute your research is unthinkable. So there's a beautiful mix of tradition. There's a beautiful mix of modernity which comes in as we move forward. But remember, live your passion. Change, perhaps, is the only thing which is permanent. I mean, change, lessness in the midst of change, and that is that we have to accommodate with the changes. It's a state of flux. So from the ancient times, I call it ancient times, that is the print era when Gandhiji used to give a speech and the whole text uh, the media used to publish from uh, beginning of the first sentence to the last sentence. And that was print media. And then the second era is electronic era. Third era is digital era. And now we call social media era also. And the latest is AI, the artificial intelligence era. That is also, uh, I mean, creating a major impact in our media society, media uh, uh, scenario. The interesting thing is that, you know, in our childhood days, we used to write a essay. It began Ashirvad na Obisha. It's a boon, it's a blessing or curse. So when television entered into our, uh, I mean the television technology entered into our society and post globalization, there is a massive television manufacturing industries, there's a massive growth. And we thought, we, 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 the people of India, I'm talking about, a large section of people we thought that now we will be television obsessed. So it's an electronic era. And the relevance of print journalism, the content journalism, uh, it is over. But actually, it didn't happen. And in West also, the Financial Times 
we, I, I got a training and not only myself, there is a uh, Indian delegation, the UK government uh, gave us the opportunity. And it's a, uh, I think 91, 92, when Narsimha Rao was prime minister, economic liberalization started. That time, the chief editor of Financial Times sitting in London, he told us that there is a tendency that readers are, I mean, leaving the print. And that's why from broadsheet to tabloid were moving in the urban area. And the suburban area still here uh, with the broadsheet uh, editions. So they tried to accommodate the change, the appetite of the readers, the changing habits of the clientele, and they change themselves. So when I was younger, at that time, yes, you had to be an engineer or a doctor or a chartered accountant. There was nothing else, right? So my dad was a doctor. So obviously, as a older child, the expectation was, oh, doctor, I'm like, hello, will somebody please ask me? It's my life. So anyway, I turned out to be an engineer. I mean, I didn't go too far. But my heart was always in the arts. Schoolio, I, you know, I like drawing, I like the artsy things, but as luck would have it, I wasn't uh, an engineer and I spent a good, I did my duty and I spent a good 25 years at Intel, which by the way, produced the uh, hardware for all the wonderful electronic media that you use. <clears throat> So, um, but after that, while I was working, I still kept in touch with my interest. And that I think is very important. I, I know you guys are, you know, studying to go to school, but if you have another interest, for example, there may be somebody who loves dancing. So one uh, little bit of my learning is that keep, don't lose touch with it. You uh, do your dancing in your free time. I work with victims of domestic violence in the US. I live in Phoenix, Arizona, and you would be surprised how many people from the Indian subcontinent who live in Phoenix, Arizona, and are victims, are, are like terrible victims of domestic violence. That is one area where I keep working with the local media to see if you know we can get some coverage some information around it so that everybody is aware that you know just because you came from India and it was okay in your hometown or in your village you can't do it here we have laws so with that piece of work uh, videos informational videos in uh, coverage by the local both print and uh, you know television and radio is very very important um i as a social i mean i'm speaking as a social entrepreneur therefore i'm talking about social issues that i work with so you know my two cents to you is as you grow up just keep these social things in mind as you work and see if there is a change and you know people you guys who will be in media you have huge impact you have a huge audience open to you so help see you know use your talent and uh, your training to do to help society see my journey has been very uh, I mean uh, checkered I used to write I wanted to be a sports journalist uh, but those days, you know, I mean, it's, as all of you had faced this thing, that you didn't have much options in your career and even in academics. So it was so structured, like either you study science or commerce or humanities. And those days, uh, humanities is not for the male, you know. Even <laughs> arts. Arts, yeah. So those days we call, we used to call it arts, not even human. And by being myself, I always wanted to do some. There are very few males and there are maximum females. We have to be yeah, yeah, careful. Society is totally changed. No, I. So I'm. 
I mean, I am very happy to see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so uh, I'm talking about the social mindset Absolutely. of those days. So being uh, a, a person who wanted to be different. So I got good marks in science, but all of my f friends were going to science. So I decided that, okay, humanities is for women and science is for everybody. So <laughs> I should study commerce. <laughs> 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 and initially it was good for me, I, I scored good numbers and everything. But gradually I realized that this is not my space. And then it was a disaster. But luckily I could, I mean, pass through that, that accountancy honors phase and get into university, Calcutta University and started studying journalism. That is for the first time I actually enjoyed studying. Then it happened like that, I mean, uh, I won't uh, elaborate it, well, but then it ha happened like that, I started freelancing. Those days, even those days, there was not much options. Only two, three newspapers, Anandu Bajar, uh, uh, Aajkal, Bortoman, and Pratidim was just uh, beginning. So not much options. So I started uh, freelancing. And after one year, I realized, I mean, Joyant Babu will be able to tell. I mean, the journalism is not that kind of medium that I dreamt for. Uh, being uh, independent, uh, being raising oppressed boys, and, you know, it's not that. It's another job and where you are dominated by editorial policy and, I mean, pressure and so many things. So I wanted to express, uh, I, I soon realized it's not my space. So, and suddenly cinema came. So I've gone through this change. And also during that time, I started watching movies. And those days it was like, uh, it was all celluloid. Okay. The video technology was just introduced. So there was a hierarchy between filmmakers. Okay, these are like lower grade uh, kind of technology. So once it happens uh, that after making our first film in Super VHS, uh, because uh, for us it was, I have to tell my story. If I don't have money, I would uh, choose the cheapest option. Maybe I'll take a camera from my friend and do it. But I have to tell my story. So that was my intention. Then there was these filmmakers, uh, they were very uh, skeptic about these changes. Uh, they were very snob about what they have learned and understand about technology. So one of those days, that film was very popular. I also discuss about that film. So uh, one of this social gathering after making this film, and it made me a little bit famous also. So I introduced myself. No, I mean, I'm talking about 1995, when I just started, it was my first film. So, uh, so I introduced myself as a filmmaker. So one of those guys was beside me, I said, Oh, okay, call yourself tape maker, not a filmmaker. <laughs> so then we realized how from VHS to digital, to, I mean, the whole gap. Exactly. If you want to tell a story through whatever media, huh? and no one should or can be able to stop you. Absolutely. And technology, of course, it helped become uh, this medium, especially audiovisual media, very democratic, accessible. I mean, previously it was all about rich people's business, you know. Now we can tell you a story and as a documentary filmmaker I found that you won't believe in last 30 years when Indian neorealism died down uh, uh, because the government stopped backing uh, those films like Minal Sen uh, and the next generation Gautam Ghosh and other people. It was an Indian documentary filmmaker who took up the challenge and told many stories from even small villages, small towns. So it has its own issues, own issues, own aesthetics, own kind of voice. And for 30 years, Indian documentary has been 
and in this 30 years indian society has gone through huge change from liberalization to the even internationally also berlin wall fell down the i mean the ideological shift happened the balance of power so it was a huge uh, change the whole society was going through so i mean change is important i mean to be open to changes is also very important but it is i mean <clears throat> it is changing so fast it is also uh, uh, important to understand yourself to have a vision to have understanding of uh, society because what change you you should accept and what you should reject that kind of decision making should be there also